recently on a live stream, I decided, well, why don't we just stop using attributes altogether? So I went out, I needed a striker. We used statistics to find a striker and we signed him without even looking at his attributes. And lo and behold, when he popped up into the team, he was every inch the greedy goal scorer that I wanted. Goals, 13 XG, uh, so, so. I'm not, I'm not jumping up. 11.9, he doesn't cover a lot of ground, so forget it. And so the only one I think is going to be this guy, Morten Hansen. Remember, we haven't seen his attributes, man. We have no clue what his attributes are like. Without looking at his attributes, right? What did I say about his distance covered just now? I say he's going to have good pace. Look at that. His spray means he will not. He will go into a situation that other players may not. Ha ha! Okay, spirited. He's got a good personality. Can play in a couple of positions. Fairly adaptable. I think we are. We might not be doing too badly with him. We have not seen Morton Hansen's attributes at all. We're doing this blind. <laughs> Does this mean we have to play without attributes to be successful? Of course not. I mean, there are so many tools in the game that will help you maximize your performance. And I've also created a tool for you guys as well that will tell you whether your tactic is any good. On today's show, I'm going to share with you what I use uh, in the game to get the best out of my players. If your tactic is bad, it's bad. There's nothing that can fix it. So perhaps the first thing you want to do is use this tool. With the help of some of my friends, we've designed something called the Total Tactics Tester. In days of past, when I used to create Super Tactics, this is the system I use, except, you know, I used to take two weeks to do this because I had to run it on multiple different machines. Today, we've created a safe for you, which you can use to go test your tactics with. Essentially, we've got four instances of the same team in four different leagues that have been custom designed. These are leagues which we call the testing leagues. We've got four testing leagues. We've got the balance league, which is a reflection of any league around the world where you have two favorites, maybe a couple of underdogs and a couple of teams that are of a similar standard. Here, Napoli is actually a middling team and the champions are expected to be Liverpool or Real Madrid. Then we have the underdog league where... All the teams are actually weaker than Napoli. Here, you should be winning this league comfortably. Then we've got the Average Teams League, which is a league that has got a lot of teams of a similar standard to Napoli. Here, once again, you should be aiming to win this league. Finally, we've got the Elite League, where Napoli is the underdog. Here, all the other teams are supposed to be better than Napoli. So if your tactic that you've created can finish among the top four, is generally considered to be a really good tactic. Now, if your tactic is very good, it should finish top two here and win the rest of the leagues. If your tactic can't even win the underdog teams league or you, you get fired in the average teams league, then you need to do some work with your tactic. So this is a fantastic tool that can give you, at a glance, information on the quality of your tactic. And all you need to do is visit the Total Tactics Discord, go grab that, Took me some time to create this with the help of my friends. And it's going to save you a lot of time when you're asking yourself that very simple question. Is my tactic good enough? Some of you are probably familiar with the fact that I'm using Palemo in a long-term save over on BTN Live. And with that team, I actually have no attributes as well. So I don't display any attributes because I am singularly focused on one thing and one thing only. I just want to know how good my players are by using statistics. I'm not suggesting you go out there and play a game with other attributes. What I am suggesting is start paying attention to statistics in the game. And to do that, you normally need to start a game uh, safe with leagues that are playable or perhaps even view only because then you get the data from the leagues. But um, as far as detailed match reports are concerned, you're only going to get them from playable leagues. And my recommendation is if you want to play a game where you're using statistics a lot, then you want the leagues to be playable. And if you have any favorite leaks that you like to go and scout, then those leaks should be playable too. Remember the wonderful little striker that I signed blind without looking at his attributes, Morten Hansen, the guy at the top of the show? Well, if you want to go and scout players like this, then the second thing you really need to do is get a good custom view and try and understand the kind of statistics you're after. I know that the data hub and the statistics can be a bit much for some people. 
And I'm going to try and simplify this and make it easier for you in the next couple of minutes. I'm not here to explain in detail how to play with on attributes. To do that, I suggest following me on the live stream because it's a very involved process and I don't think doing a video in 10 minutes is going to cover everything. What I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on statistics. The statistics that tell me without looking at attributes whether or not my players are doing the job. And why is this important? Far too many times I've heard this, um, this player is not good enough for the position because his attributes are not good enough. I mean, some people look at a difference of one in an attribute and make a determination that player A is better than player B. However, there are lots of hidden attributes as well. And how a player performs on the pitch is a function of the roles and duties that are playing around him too. So there's a lot more at stake. And sometimes you need to look at the statistics to find out whether there's a problem with your tactic, which makes the understanding statistics quite important. So I'm going to break a team down into component parts so that we can apply statistics to determine things like the kinds of players that we need to go out and scout or perhaps player A is better in this position than player B. Let's begin first with strikers. With strikers, it's really easy. You're looking at XG, you're looking at goals, you're looking at the ratio between the two. For every 10 XG, you want him to score at least 13 goals. That is the number that you should be aiming for, a ratio of 1.3. This means that the player is technically good enough, he's skillful enough to find the back of the net. The second thing you want to check is shot on target percentage. Generally, these players should have a good shot on target percentage. Anything between 40 to 50, percent is actually quite good. Sometimes you will find some really good strikers with lower shot on target percentage, which could be a reflection that the tactic in itself, if we can be tweaked to give them more opportunities in and around the area, they could be even more deadlier. So that, so that is how we actually spotted Morten Hansen. Now he's in our team. I've got this custom view uh, and you can see here, he's, since he's joined us, he's made 12 appearances. His XG is 5.8 and his goals are 7 and he's got a shot on target percentage of 54, which means that he's actually a pretty good goal scorer at the age of only uh, 19 years old. We've got lots of hopes pinned on him for the future. What if you're looking for a striker who's a creator as well? Then... You're looking for other little uh, statistical pieces of information. Uh, in that, sometimes I'm looking at things like um, key passes per 90. Like here, we've got key passes. As you can see, Morten Hansen makes about 1.75. This means he creates 1.75 chances for his the rest of his teammates. But I, when I want to pay him up with a creative force in front, I'm looking at Mario Facin. Mario Facin has got 2.68 key passes per 90. So I like to pair the two of them up because Mario Facin makes quite a few passes. Uh, he tries to unlock defenses. He creates some chances. Here we can see CCC is literally just, right now it just means goal scoring chances is created. So it's 17 and uh, he's pretty decent in and around the area as well. So pairing these two up, one a bit more of a creator, one a goal scorer, it's enough for me and that's a lot of information already. Now, if you want to take this even further, you can. This is the reason why I've got height as well. So I've got height here for Albert Tholen is 1.88 meters tall. And then um, he wins about 68% of his hitters, uh, wins about seven hitters a game. Well, he's not a towering presence in the final third, but he definitely has a physical presence that might deter some defenders. And if I wanted to pair him up with a strong presence in the final third, I could, knowing that Albert Tholen also has like 1.46 tackles a game, which means I could probably deploy him as a pressing forward in the final third. I find this style of play quite like exhilarating. It's fun to watch. And uh, you're looking at statistics to understand your players a bit more effectively. And there are, of course, other tools in the game too. If you click on a player and go to player performance, you get other reports here. Um, you need to ask for these reports. You can use polygons or you can have scatter graphs as well. And these are available for that player. Now, as you can see here, we don't expect him to be assisting a lot of his players and his shots on target percentage is pretty high. His conversion rate is about 23%, which is decent. I'm always looking at about 25%. 25% is like insanely good already. And this is a pretty decent conversion rate. Uh, he doesn't go out there and assist a lot, which is exactly what I want him to do. I want him to focus his mind on finding the back of the net. And this kind of information is available within the game itself. Two players with similar attributes are 
still probably going to give you different kinds of performances in games. And that difference can only be understood by looking at statistics. So, and this is especially important for players. I expect to see, you know, busting a gut, helping us when we're attacking or coming back down and helping the team when they're defending. Most of you are probably familiar that I do a 4 one 3 2 4 3 one 2, you know, flip of my tactic. And I've been doing that for since championship manager. And if you notice, um, the way I've set my 4 3 one 2 and my 4 one 3 twos up, these guys are always very hardworking. The three midfielders are supposed to be solid going up and coming down. But most importantly, whenever I create a tactic like this, the player in the center always has good interceptions. I share with many of you the thought processes I was using during the stream. I'm going to recap what I did on that stream right now. I was looking for players who were reliable at winning the ball and distributing the ball. Essentially, I was looking for a player who had good interceptions per 90, good tackles, uh, one ratio, and good pass completion numbers. I was looking for somebody to play in the central midfield slot and uh, the player in the middle and my eyes uh, fell on Tarsisio because Tarsisio had 2.02 intercessions per 90. He had a height of 1.97. A tackles completion ratio of 76%, which was fairly decent. And he had a pass completion number of 94%. This is a player that hardly lost the ball. And I was pretty impressed with him, even though uh, if he played as a CM on defense, he still, you know, would chip in with uh, some small chances he might create for the rest of the team but generally i was quite impressed with these numbers and i thought well you know this is going to be a player who's pretty decent at winning the ball in the center and he did exactly that it's like Gustav anderson he doesn't tackle but he's got the eye for the pass so so Gustav anderson over i mean he does tackle have you seen his tackling numbers his ratio is about 70 percent. so when he does he does you know put in a shift Yes, bravery. Even though his attribute says like, you know, I think it's a single digit for that. Single digit for his tackling. Nice reading of the game. Tarsisio, why is he playing there? Remember earlier we saw interceptions, the highest in the team? That's why he's playing there. There is no one general rule for which statistic is important for your tactic because it'll all depend on the kind of tactics you want to play. A person who's playing a soak and hit kind of game may value a different set of attributes than me. So for me to go out there and emphatically state that these statistics are important is actually kind of misleading and I don't want to do that. So I would recommend that you go into each one of your games, sit down, look at your tactic, determine if your tactic is actually good in the first place, which is why we've got a total tactics tester, and then identify the statistics. Now, I know I haven't covered all the statistics and definitely not for all the positions, and if you want to find out more information, I do recommend popping in on my stream or even asking me a question below. Now, if you have more questions or if you want me to focus on specific positions on the pitch that you might be having challenges with, let me know in the comments below. Let me also know what you thought of this video. Did it help you out? Hit the like and the subscribe button if it did. If it didn't, well, let me know why in the comments below too. Well, meanwhile, you guys, please stay safe and healthy. I know it's incredibly hot out there. I hope you have found some way to cool yourselves down.